Good afternoon, good morning. This video will be titled, Even if the Cleveland Cavaliers win, the Cleveland residents will still lose, unfortunately. Um, and the reason why is because of the issue with the uh, public funding and the public financing and using taxpayer dollars to renovate the Quicken's Loans Arena. And this is not just a local issue, which is why I'm doing this video even though we do you know do videos on local issues so um, I don't know if you guys know but the NFL has used 6.7 billion dollars of taxpayers money to um, build NFL stadiums um, for example the even in baseball the commercial park they used 110 billion, 110 million dollars of taxpayers' money, despite the dilapidated homes and different things like that going on in Detroit. Um, but the thing is, uh, Harvard economists and different economists have said, and they all agree that stadiums are not a good investment for a city. They're not economically feasible. So. Basically, for example, if you take NFL stadiums, they generally only operate, let's say, a good five months out the year, the preseason and the NFL season. If you're lucky to get into the playoffs, you might get an extra month, but that's only, you know, one game depending on if you win or lose. So most teams, they get four to five months where they operate, and the rest of this eight to seven months, mostly eight, the stadium, NFL stadium, unless it's the Cowboys stadium, but that's a rare stadium. You know, they're not being used like that. So, um, also, and this goes for all sports arenas, baseball, basketball, football, and hockey. The concession stands and different things, all those jobs, they're part-time, they're temporary, they're seasonal, and it's not... Yeah, it's, it's not uh, full-time, it's part-time. So, that being said, if you work there also, you can't feed your family off of that, just, you know, income alone. So, it's not steady, it's unstable, it's, and it's not enough to, you know, feed your family. Yet, um, I don't know, how is that a good investment? And they say that if they bring these arenas that, it helps outside businesses, but usually, and Cleveland is a great example, when LeBron left, those businesses left, and when he came back, they came back, but those businesses were mainly downtown. And money that circulates downtown generally stays in downtown. That's why downtown keeps getting money to be rebuilt, and they spent hundreds of millions of dollars rebuilding downtown. So, you have that situation. Um, let's look into some of the teams. So, basically, it's not economically feasible, yet all over the country, um, many other teams keep getting money um, and using the taxpayer dollars. Now, and this is not to go off topic, but this is a part of the gentrification in a if you look at the major sports like the uh, Olympics and soccer and um, mostly that, mostly the Olympics, and anytime there's like a world event, a mega world event, there's usually displacement, there's usually gentrification taking place um, within those areas near the stadium so they can make sure they get all the money from the tourists. So over the past 15 years, more than $12 billion, billion in public money has been spent on privately owned stadiums. Between 1991 and 2010, 101 new stadiums, where most of those projects were funded by taxpayers. And I'll leave a link in the description where you can see if a team in your city, um, how much taxpayer money is used to build that stadium. Because another reason it's a bad investment is it takes 
on average, usually 30 years to pay it off. So essentially, we're collectively paying for a house that a lot of people won't live to see paid off. Like they say, the house, you pay it forever. And also, in Oakland, they're still paying $90 million for the Coliseum from the 90s, from a loan. But the Oakland mayor, Libby Schaff, she basically declined to use public funding to build the stadium. So there are instances of mayors and different people taking stands against it. So it's not like it's impossible. It's just how, um, let's say, vulnerable or how naive are the politicians in your local city and, you know, are they willing to stand up for the interests of the people or the interests of the businessmen? Because another tactic they use is they give money to and shares to the local politicians and some businessmen in the area. Um, also in Seattle, the reason the Supersonics left was because the owner did not want to use public funding. They lost their team 10 years ago because Mayor Greg Nichols, who opposed the measure, said at a news conference this morning that the doors remain open to the team, but not in a way Seattle uh, Sonics ownership is interest, interested in. If they're willing to put private dollars toward enhancing a facility at Seattle Center, we'll work with them. But if they're looking for a public subsidy, I don't think it will happen. So. That right there is clear as day. So I don't, our mayor, he is not, um, he he basically claimed that they were going to demolish, I think, 500 homes and different things like that, which is good, but that should have been done a long time ago, number one. And number two, don't do it out of spite because you're doing the, um, renovation of the Quicken's Loans Arena, which is going to take, I think, 80 million or 40 to 80 million of our tax money. So, and it gets so bad that even in Glendale, Arizona, they threatened to um, basically sell the city hall and the police station as collateral for a loan to pay back. So it's like we got to really. Um, look at our fanatics, fanaticism and our fandom and, you know, why do we, uh, it's kind of like church. If we're in a conscious community or whatever, if we're awake, you know, we can enjoy sports. It's not saying if you're conscious, don't play basketball or nothing. It's saying, let's look at, let, look at it objectively. We're not getting this money back, and this is money that can be used in our communities to um, better schools, better protection, better resources, better recreation centers, whatever, after school programs, and it's being used for entertainment. And basically, the people who own these teams are already rich, they're rich, they're billionaires, and different things like that, but they're using our money, money, so they're not even putting up their money to build these stadiums. They're not using their money, they're using borrowed money, and they never have to pay back the tax money. So they're basically getting free money. Even in Hamilton, Ohio, the baseball and football stadiums, um, they got $805 million in taxpayer money but they slashed the budget for the police and education, and one of seven people live below the poverty line. Yet they use almost a billion dollars to rebuild this stadium. Um, the cost went up 70% in, in the 2000s from 142 million to 241 million to build a new, you know, that was the average cost that was used to build a new facility. Um, now the people in Glendale, Arizona, they actually got it down from 15 million to 6.5 million. And that is still leaving it up to open discussion. So 
Um, this is basically, and I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna try and do a survey, maybe game one of the finals or a couple of days before. And it's called a contingent valuation method. And it's I'm gonna ask different fans if the Cavs were leaving, how would you, how much would you be willing to pay per year? Because we all pay or not. If you're working and you pay taxes, you you pay anyway. And if you say more than a certain amount of number or less, that gauge is how much you really like the team based on its value and what is your value based on its actual value. So you can try that. Try that on your own. Just maybe write down a number and say, I'll pay this amount a year, but I won't pay more than this amount a year, or I'll pay this at least. And then... I'll post a link on how much we're paying in taxes. And um, I don't want to give it away, but because that's the whole point. It's based on you're not supposed to really know yet if you don't know how much you're actually paying per year. So how, however much you value your team, if they were leaving, if you're not willing to pay more without really knowing how much you're already paying, if you're not willing to pay that or more, then basically, based on your values, you don't, you shouldn't care if the team leaves or not. So that's pretty much it. Um, let's see, Glendale, they laid off 49 public workers. Also, in addition to putting up the city hall and the police station. So the economists say universally that it's not a good investment. The people don't make enough, it's short term, it's not full time, it's seasonal, temporary, whatever, and yet we keep investing in it. We don't even realize how really bad this is. And um, the majority of the people that play in these arenas come from the environments that need the public resources for the you know, public education. Uh, re, um, recreation centers and different things like that. So uh, let me know what you think. How much would you be willing to pay to keep your team? And even if Cleveland wins, I have Cleveland in six. But even if Cleveland wins the championship, the Cleveland residents will lose. We will lose. And many other residents are already losing. So... Check your sports fandom. Is it blinding you? Does this information upset upset you? Does it make you feel funny? Or do you not even care about it? Do you think it's not important? But think about the lots of people who don't even like sports and they're still paying for it if they're paying for tax dollars. Because not everybody likes sports, but a lot of people do. So... Leave your number in the description link as far as the number you would pay to keep your sports team. And what do you think about that money going back into our neighborhoods? Mm -hmm.